Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to do a quick hit on the game Grant Moves South, the Fort Donaldson Shiloh Campaign. Publisher was Quarterdeck Games in the year 1983 and the designer was John Southerd. On the back of the box we find a small sample of the map and counters. We also find an introduction and some information about the players roles in the game as well as a list of the components. Grant moves south. Find out where your enemy is. Get at him as soon as you can. Strike him as hard as you can and as often as you can and keep moving on from Ulysses S. Grant. Early in 1862 a little known general named Ulysses S. Grant overran western Tennessee taking two river forts and the largest bag of prisoners captured up to that time by an American army. But as the Union troops advanced on Corinth, the Confederates hit back, staking everything on a furious battle in the woods around Shiloh Church. Contents One sheet of 200 die-cut half-inch brown core cardboard counters with a glossy finish. Here's a brief look at the actual counters themselves and the information printed on them. Okay, let's go through the sequence of play quickly. We have the Union player turn, then we have the weather determination phase, the unit arrival phase, supply phase, movement allowance determination phase, movement phase, first attack phase. Then we have the first counterattack phase, we have the battle reinforcement phase, we have the second attack phase, we have the second counterattack phase, then we have a rally phase. The Confederate player turn is basically the reverse of that, with the Union player taking over the counterattacking phases. At the end of the Confederate player turn, you'll advance a turn record marker and start a new turn. In addition, this is the only errata I could find, and it actually came in the box itself. Um, there's not much errata at the um, at the top on the top sheet. However, apparently they did not include the naval battle table, which is uh, compromises the lower um, errata sheet. So, if you do buy the game, make sure you get the errata for it. Uh, you will need the naval battle table for sure. The game comes with a four color 22 by 26 inch unmounted map sheet with a glossy finish. Some of the terrain features found on it are we have Pittsburgh Landing which is considered to be just a landing hex. It is not a town, let's see, it's a town. It's going to be a town and a landing hex. We have a major river here, this would be the Tennessee. We have roads. We have minor rivers over here. We have the rail system at the time. And let's see, everything else I think is considered a clear hex, but um, obviously the area was very heavily wooded, so I'm thinking that they're just calling the Clear hexes, same as woods, basically. Um, let me double check on the river. I'm sure that's a Tennessee. Yeah, Tennessee. So that's just kind of a brief look at the map. Um, pretty garish by today's standards, but it was not bad back uh, in the days of 3W and the Wargamer magazine. So um, you can play on it. I'm not going to say it's functional, but I think it gets the job done. So. Anyway, it's not going to win any awards for beauty. It also comes with a nice black and white setup map on the front side. And on the reverse, you get uh, the table of contents and the victory point record um, um, track. So that is a very detailed sequence of play or not sequence of play, but table of contents.
and they have the sequence of play printed up at the top. We also have a turn record track and reinforcement schedules. Um, I don't see any particular days or times printed on them to let you know what the time scale of the game is, but it looks like it's at least 18 turns if you play the full game. We also had the Buell transfer table on there, and we had the River River Battles table. Hmm. Now, how does that work in relationship to the errata that I have? Maybe. I'm not sure. I'll have to check it out. See what. Uh, see what the difference is. Naval battles table. Yep. So anyway, I'll have to check that out and compare that to the errata. Here we have the um, card that has the five combat results tables on it. Looks to me like we start over here with one to seven attacking points with superior leadership. Then we have equal leadership, inferior leadership, and at the bottom it looks like you roll on the retreat table to see what happens. Like you could be surprised, uh, lose an additional strength point, lose no additional strength points, that kind of thing based upon the uh, um, total of the attacking strength. Um, then we have 8 to 15, and then over on the other side we have 16 to 23 strength points. We'll flip it over here, get my pointer out of the way, and it's coming back again. Enough. And then on the back side we have 24 to 32 attacking points, again with superior leadership, equal leadership, and inferior leadership, and retreat tables. And then we have 33 or more attacking points. So, definitely, uh, the more of a stronger force, the more damage you're going to do to both yourself and the enemy, it looks like. And at the bottom, or next column, I guess, not bottom. We have the leader casualty chart. Looks like you roll uh, 2d6 uh, and have one superior die and one inferior die and you'll get a 1 to 36 probability of um, having a leader injured or uh, casually. And that's it for a brief look at Grant Moose South. I haven't played the game. I've had it for several years now, but um, I haven't played it. Don't know the rules. Don't know everything about it. Don't know very much about it. So I'm going to experiment with it for a while and see what I think. I think it's going to be a struggle. The counters are very thick, and um, I already broke one pair of scissors trying to cut them out of the frame. So um, I would suggest that you have a heavy-duty pair of scissors, a heavy-duty counter cutter if you have it or a nice sharp knife and a cutting board anyway um, that's pretty much all I have to say about this game at the moment I may come back and do some examples of play I may not so anyway there's a uh, not much on it on board game geek so um, you'll have to search elsewhere for more detailed information I guess so anyway I will talk to you later. Have a good day, and we'll see you soon, hopefully.